Review, 2023 Mercedes EQE 500 SUV takes a gentle glide path. The path to electrification, for some automakers, doesn't come with a lot of guardrails. The auto world has seen a fusillade of new EV brands, and some have already run out of rocket fuel, in the form of dollars and runway. There's an EV brand reckoning coming, and it won't be pretty or cheap. Other brands like Mercedes-Benz have more skin in the automotive game and have taken a more cautious approach. Their EV glide path has to taper off gas-powered SUVs while it boosts and amplifies its maiden electric vehicles. They need to soar without strangling off the money-making part of the business. They have to hope it all works out nearly perfectly. The 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV makes total sense in that framework. It's a piece of forward-thinking technology in terms of safety and infotainment, as well as the environment. As an electric utility vehicle, it hedges lots of expensive bets with its 400-volt charging, 279 miles of maximum range, and its Electrify America charging solution, while others have developed custom charging networks and brawny battery packs that spin out muscle car-like performance. An AMG version with 677 horsepower will come in 2024, but for now the EQE 500 formatic SUV sits at the top of the three-model lineup. It's the swiftest and sharpest blade to take into battle with vehicles like the BMW 9 and the Audi Q8 e-tron, while it splits the difference in price and size between the Tesla Model Y and X crossovers. The 2023 Mercedes EQE SUV looks smoothly tapered outside while it's festooned with digital displays inside. How fast is the Mercedes EQE 500 SUV? I drove the EQE SUV lineup last week in Portugal, focusing for an afternoon on the 500 formatted version. With seating for five, it's a relative of the EQS sedan and SUV, with a smaller battery pack and a more taut shape. Keeping a moderate pace through some light Lisbon traffic that dissolved as we neared the surfing coast of Nazari, the EQE 500 formatic SUV handled undulating roads the simple way, by dispatching them. How it gets there, in electric force, is from a scaled-down solution like the 108 kilowatt hours one in the EQS sedan and SUV. Base versions of the EQE soft carry a single motor in the front that teams with a smaller battery pack and reel out 288 horsepower. In the 500 formatic edition, a second motor at the rear drives total output to 300 kilowatts between the two motors. In all, the 500 formatic churns out 536 horsepower and 633 pound-foot of torque, which Mercedes says will clip 0 to 60 miles per hour runs in 4.6 seconds. Top speed set at 130 miles per hour. It's quick in objective terms, though it's far from the crazed acceleration that can issue from a Tesla Model X. Like its EQE 350 Plus SUV kin, the twin-motor, all-wheel drive edition masks its acceleration in a couple of ways. The heft of the 90.6 kWh battery pack that forms its floor mutes the responses, for one. It checks in at nearly 5,600 pounds, or about the same as a three-row GLS SUV. The more important piece comes in its suspension design, with adaptive dampers, air springs, and rear axle steering, the EQE sub deploys chips and circuits and code to whittle down its actual size into something virtually smaller. A good balance between ride and handling precision will be one of the most compelling reasons to buy the EQE sub, and the clearest victory over cars from Tesla and Lucid, thanks mostly to the energy-consuming adaptive suspension. A base 350 Plus Edition manages with a front strut and rear multi-link suspension. I drove the 500 for Matic with the available adaptive setup over about 100 miles of moderate speed byways north of Lisbon, where its composure and configurability stood out. The EQE sub gets drive modes that range from eco to comfort to sport and off-road, with an individual notch that lets drivers pick and choose from steering weight to suspension damping. Ultimately, the EQE 500 formatic SUV felt best left in sport and on wide sweeping surfaces. Coupled with the rear axle steering system, it can move the rear tires up to 10 degrees out of phase with the fronts below 37 miles per hour to reduce the EQE sub's turning radius. The sport set ride let the electric SUV slip through some of the squeezier S's without fuss. 
It can cut through improbably tight turns, though it's wide and heavy and that ultimately dictates whether you'll make it between the next brace of 400-year-old buildings. Think of it as a virtual weight loss program, one which makes the mid-size EQE surf seem smaller as it pivots and does its deep knee bends on the pavement. While it does so, its regenerative braking system can be paddled through for modes to recapture some energy lost to stopping or to stop the car entirely. It won't be rushed through the most challenging straights, though. Even in sport, the EQE self commits only to the amount of steering weight it needs to suggest the burden placed on the tires. With the 21-inch wheels that will come on US models, it jostles and thuds lightly as it passes over big speed bumps before it clobbers them with a combination of mass and suspension complexity. Mercedes hyperscreen environment won't come to the EQE surf, but its portrait-style screen and digital gauges tuck in well among the aluminum and leather. EQE surf, fine interior, exteriors, fine. The EQE sub bears the design language of its EQS and EQE siblings. It's vaguely eggy from the front, with a broad glossy band of star-studded trim fastened to the nose by a big three-point star with cat-eyed fairing into the fenders. A three-way intersection of windshield, mirror, and fender lines wears a badge that masks the transition, and in the back the EQE sub tapers dramatically in the name of aerodynamics. It pales in distinction next to the GLS and G-Class SUVs, but doesn't take any punches inside, where the knockoff S-Class cabins are certified knockout. Decked out with a 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster, 12.8-inch touchscreen with a fairly well-sorted version of MBUX software, not to mention wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, it's marvelous when configured with mocha brown Nappa leather and laser-slitted Burmester speaker grills. It sets a high bar for electric car luxury without resorting to hyperscreen-style visual overload, even before you pick one of its four soundscapes, it generates its own noises from roaring pulse to silver waves and vivid flux, even a new one dubbed Serene Breeze. Co-branding with Gwyneth Paltrow's Empire seems inevitable. While it's suitably comfortable up front for even most tall passengers who can get cooled seats with massage modes, and in the second row of seats, for up to three big ones, the EQE sub doesn't fare as well in cargo spaces as the similarly sized GLE class. There's no third row seat option, and the EQE sub has 14.0 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats, 59.0 cubic feet behind the front seats. That first number smaller than the last generation GLC, while the latter number's a few cubic feet bigger. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.